As mentioned before, StarkNet allows you to send and receive messages from layer one. To facilitate this, we provide the following methods. On layer one, they are presented by methods given at the StarkNet core uh, solidity contract, while on layer two, they are provided by the StarkNet OS. In order to send a message from layer one to layer two, we can use the send message to L2 method. As input, it receives the layer two contract address, which we receive when we deploy the contract on layer two, a unique selector that is given to a function that allows us to know which function we are about to invoke, as well as the payload, which is simply the input to that function. To facilitate the transfer of this message, on layer two, we provide a function that has the L1 handler directive above it. In this case, foo is designated as a layer one handler. This is what gives foo the unique selector indicated by the foo selector on the left here. In the other direction, when we want to send information back from layer two to layer one, we have the function bar here, which can invoke the send message to L1 uh, function that is given by the StarkNet OS. As input, this receives a layer one contract address, a payload size indicating the amount of inputs we are passing in the message, and the payload itself. Again, to facilitate this, on the other end, a layer one contract has to ping the StarkNet core uh, contract with the consume message from layer two method. In this case, the uh, consume message from layer two receives as input the layer two contract address, as well as a payload, which will contain the transferred payload back from layer two. To illustrate the usage of layer one and layer two interactions, we'll review the following StarkNet contract as given in the StarkNet tutorials. This contract is similar to the example contract we reviewed at the start of these videos, with the addition of two functions. Withdraw, which is a layer one, layer two interaction uh, function that allows us to transfer funds from layer two back to layer one, and deposit, which allows us to uh, deposit funds from layer one into layer two. Both these functions will, of course, change our balance variable, which we've already discussed before, increasing or decreasing the balance accordingly. Furthermore, in order to facilitate this, we also provide an example solidity contract that will facilitate the transfer of funds to and from layer one. In this case, we have a layer one, layer two example contract that implements on layer one similar functions withdraw and deposit using the StartNet core contract. 